This little board is called a CW decoder and they are all over eBay for around ten dollars. There's multiple sellers and uh, they're cheap and um, they arrive in a in a week or so or maybe longer but there's no instructions and it took a while to figure out how to make this thing work. So going over it first of all over here on the left you've got two jacks now all of the jacks except for the power jack are uh, 1 8 inch stereo type jacks and both of the input pins are connected together so um, I've tried using a mono plug but that didn't work I had to use a stereo plug so uh, over here on the right is your power power input on the back or the top and it says 9 volts here out beside it so if you put 9 volts DC in and be sure it's DC and be sure that your polarity is such that negative is ground uh, it should work okay there is a 7805 regulator chip in here that regulates it down to 5 volts. This jack is your audio input from your source. Now I'm coming from the output of a keyer and so my code will be uh, pretty close to perfect as far as the, uh, the pitch and the lack of static and so forth. And uh, again this is a stereo jack and um, this one over here is simply a pass-through and it's used for an output to a speaker so that you can monitor yourself. And if you own this out, this side and this side are directly connected to each other right here. This jack on, on the back is also a stereo jack and it's, a, it's labeled key in so I connected a key in and um, what that does is allow you to tap out Morse code on your key and it gives you a reading here. You can see I got an E just from tapping it and if I hold it down I get a T. So if I go dit 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 da I get E E E T. So I've got to make it <laughs> I've got to make it think I'm sending a letter I'm sending V's. So it, it's really hard to get it right. It's got to be just perfect. Da 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 da. Test. And there came the T. So there you are. You can tap out Morse code on it. Now, as far as feeding audio in, uh, let's see, I got my paddle hooked up. So, so there you go. Uh, the audio makes this little LED blink and this little pot seems to adjust the pitch that it responds to the best. And sometimes there are two points on it where it responds. So what I did was feed a steady tone in and adjusted this pot for a maximum brilliance on the um, LED. And then this button here turns off and on the spacing. So if I turn that off, even though you're sending a space, it runs them together. Now that's really a handy feature, isn't it? Okay, and we'll turn that back on. And this is a reset. <clears throat> and when you hit that, it comes back with some number that says character slash minimum 
I'm not sure what that means. And it comes back with a different number um, uh, when you reset it again, and it, it doesn't seem to matter. I'm not sure what, what that's all about. But anyway, uh, let's take the audio loose from my keyer. And we're going to plug it into this radio here and listen to some code and show you how it how it decodes CW. Okay. Now the audio is passing through and out the speaker over here. Now you can see the light blink in correspondence with the CW. And you can see it's pretty much gibberish. Um, that's W1AW. So I'm going to ter carefully adjust. There we go. So I've got it adjusted so that the background noise is gone because I've, I've turned down the RF gain. And if you had a bunch of static, it would come out as E's and things. So that little asterisk means that there was a blip of static that confused it. I would rate it not very good. I mean, it's very unforgiving. The code has to be virtually perfect, and the receiver has to be absolutely quiet. And it's not like using um, some of the software that I've played with. And you've tried it. Let's try somebody else here. Now you can see the light blinking there between characters. That's the background noise. I'm going to try to back that down. There we go. You can't have any background noise. Pretty bad, huh? Did okay on W1AW when things were just right, but if they're not, it's gibberish. So there you go. I mean, it's ten bucks, and it's a lot of parts for ten bucks. It's amazing they can sell for that. It's just not very good. So uh, I hope that helped. If you got one and can't figure it out, maybe this will help. Uh, what it's good for, maybe uh, code practice with a code practice oscillator feeding into it. Uh, you could maybe see that you're sending the code properly if it reads properly. Hopefully. But that's it. Thanks for watching. 73.